a very good evening to our viewers. Thank you for joining us uh, tonight on uh, the evening review. My name is Taiwo Njebela. Tonight on the platform, we are joined by Pio Nganate. He is uh, the regional governor for Omaheke. And uh, we are here to unpack a number of issues related to recent headlines regarding uh, the situation around malnutrition and hunger that is reported in the region, including, as a matter of fact, uh, in his uh, state uh, of the region address, he also touched on some of those things. Thank you, Governor, for making time. It's really mm -hmm. a pleasure because, uh, first and foremost, it's the first time that we're mm -hmm. having you. And uh, you actually were very gracious to mm -hmm. come all the way to Vinduk uh, mm -hmm. to, to be on the platform. So we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe give us a sense of... Uh, where this issue is coming from because you 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 were brave enough also to include it in your state of the region address i mm. think it was a very honest assessment mm. uh, from your office why do we have uh, cases of uh, people dying we are told about 800 died is it 800 that i saw in the in the papers mm -hmm. in the last two years from hunger mm. or malnutrition related issues mm. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, I believe you are aware that the state of the region address is the state of the region, yes. meaning the challenges that the region is facing, as well as the achievements and the way forward, mm -hmm. uh, basically, touching all the five pillars of the Arambe Prosperity Plan. And we did not specifically pick out the issue of hunger or malnutrition, but reported on a variety of issues yes. across the region. Not also only wanting to sugarcoat that everything is well in the region, but to really address issues, uh, identify them and work out plans how to address those issues. And one of them, unfortunately, was the issue of uh, mal malnourishment amongst children zero to five years, mm -hmm. uh, which is a sad story when children are dying who are in our care as adults. But it was there, and it's a multifaceted issue. It, uh, it's cross-cutting. It's on the one side could be hunger, on the one side could be food that is there and do not reach the intended beneficiaries due mm. to uh, child neglect by parents, alcohol abuse by parents, and parents who do not take care of their children. So there's a, a, a whole range of issues that are contributing towards that. Mm. But then as a region, we identified it and we said, let's address it. And we addressed it successfully. Unfortunately, the newspaper reported about something that is not true. Yeah. Uh, definitely not 800. Uh, the, the budget year 2022-2023, we have 554 cases and 13, 13 deaths. The current financial year, 318 cases and 4 deaths. So that was not correctly reported. What they reported, they reported the amount of cases as death cases. Oh, I see. So definitely the, the figure went drastically down. But even if it's four or one person dying, it's still a person dying. It should still give us sleepless nights, both me and you and the country at large. Absolutely. The, yeah, it, it's good that uh, you, have, if you have contextualized that. Um, there was another article that we did in Namibian Sun uh, maybe two months ago. I can't remember the figure. It was also related uh, to malnutrition. But uh, for a region like Omaheke, of course, like you mm. said, you know, it's, it's cross-cutting uh, cross mm. range of issues. Um, but when you think of Omaheke region, you think of uh, a region that uh, is agricultural in nature, mm. uh, maybe farming more, mm. maybe more farming than crop production, but but still, th those two activities are, uh, are very prominent in fighting hunger. Mm. What is it that Tomaheke uh, is not doing right in that regard? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I must mention that uh, we must also take the issue of hunger in context with uh, uh, the just ended period of COVID, mm. or maybe not totally ended, let's hope it's ended, where Maheke also reported on the highest number of mortality, 7% uh, compared to the rest of the country, 3%. Now, those people who died were breadwinners. They were parents to children. 
and they affected the economy also drastically and the issue of drought also that is pre pre I mean prevailing in Omaike and being a cattle country that depend on rain that depend on grass mm. definitely it affects the, the the region and that's maybe also one some of the contributing factors apart from the social issues but what is also beautiful through, through all these calamities uh, drought and uh, covid and malnutrition uh, is that we we really came together as a region we that bond is there you can feel that one everyone is carrying one another's burden mm -hmm. and and it's true that even this morning i got a call from one farmer who said governor i'm having 140 cabbages here can you please send a, a truck to come pick them up so and he's not the only one people do call people do want to support and people do care about each other but in a society like the one we are in, many times we are living for ourselves. And our motto have always been, let's live for one another. Let's uh, in, uh, rekindle that spirit of Ubuntu, where, for example, a family would always see a relative working barefoot and still say, can I buy you shoes? A neighbor that is hungry, can you please come over? And that we grew up like that, where our parents were sending plates of food every Sunday from one house to the other, exchanging mm. food. And, and that's why we need to go back to, so that we take these children as our children, irrespective of whether you biologically gave birth to him or not. Mm. But what is also beautiful through all these malnutrition issues, they have decreased. And we are now in partnership with uh, Head Start Kids in South Africa and DSM Fenwish where we are now looking at the issuing of uh, rolling out of micronutrients to children. Mm. These micronutrients, children can put it in the pub and it gives them all the necessary nutrients back and, and it prevents them from being hospitalized. But we're looking also at Omaheke having a 39% unemployment rate and say we do not want to buy these products from South Africa, but we want to set up a production hub where we're going to produce foodstuffs and mm. food systems and then create employment and also at the same time fight hunger and, and restore the dignity of our people. Absolutely. Mm. And um, government, how is it? Because um, mm. the role of governor has changed drastically uh, since 2014 after the, the constitutional amendments that came, mm. that came by because in the past governors were essentially councillors who would then be among themselves councillors would then say if i remember how it worked mm. i think that is how it worked but now you are an appointee of the president mm. and uh what, what what was said at the time was that uh, you will be the eyes of the president mm. on the ground mm. uh, in other words you report back to the head of state and then uh, in a situation like this we, we must then see the head of state or, and, and the government acting. How, how has government been handling this situation? Mm. Now, I, I must mention that government have been responsive, very responsive. They acted on our call. The office of the prime minister, apart from the food distribution that is done across the region, is giving food to the office of the governor to look at specifically the issue of malnutrition. We are now having about 1,780 people on our list where we give food, where malnutrition cases were detected. So the Office of the Prime Minister through government, of course, have acted. And in total, we have 19,000 households that have been given food through the drought relief mm -hmm. scheme. So government have acted, but as I said, uh, some of us are misusing the food distribution. We sell them to the Ganates and Toyos of this world with money. The Ganatas and Tewas of this world, they know this is wrong, but they still will buy this food. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the issue of alcohol abuse that parents are also having. So it's, it's, it's a multifaceted thing. But beautiful also is that the community realized that this is not only a fight for government, it's a fight for all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing how the office is now given donations of a car to move around and do the food distribution, do education, how retail shops are fueling this car with petrol, and, and how different farmers come with milk, come with veggies to our offices, 
and also how we have diversified as a region. We no longer only the cattle country, mm -hmm. but we are now looking at food sustainability in in in, in a, as a whole, and crop farming is also taking center stage in Omaheke. Mm -hmm. So government did respond, and they are responsive. And we had, uh, as I said, we introduced these micronutrients to them just last week. And we hope government will support it so that we can roll it out. For now, we want to roll it out to 500 kids. Uh, and uh, within three months, we should be seeing results. Mm -hmm. And moving forward is to establish our food system at Farm Nivehuop, create employment and Farm Nivehuop the name itself, Niwe Hope, means new hope. And it's amazing that 20 young people, when they had that call, they came to the office and said, Governor, can we please start cleaning the area? They are there on the land. Mm -hmm. And some farmers have given pigs now and poultry have to still have to be sourced. And, and we're looking at dairy and then a, a greenhouse. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you spoke, Governor, about um, 39 percent unemployment in mm. Omaheke. Uh, where is this coming from and um, what is being done to to address the situation? Because it's quite a, a high number. Mm. Uh, it's a national issue, not, not only an Omaheke issue, but in, in the case of your region, what is it being done? Because uh, I think <clears throat> one of the ideas that I hear from time to time is people saying, you know, each region must leverage on its mm. own strengths. Mm -hmm to create industries and whatnot. Mm. And as a, a cattle uh, region, for example, among other things that are, emerging, that, that, are, that are in your region, what is it that you think can be done to, mm. to resolve the situation? Yeah. No, I, I think one, one of the things that we should also take into account is the colonial past that we were coming from, where you were not allowed to have free movement within the urban areas. And our people immediately after independence, urbanization started. And we only have one town, that's the town of Hobawes. So everybody is coming to Hobawes. And they're leaving the rural areas. The rural areas, in my opinion, are the ones that should fit the urban areas. And, and this is a, a sad story that our people do leave the urban the rural areas where production should take place and they come to the urban areas. And the other uniqueness is that Hobabes is the only town in Omaheke. So in terms of employment creation, we need industry, we need production hubs. And that's what we are striving towards as, a, as an office. That's why we want with DSM to put up a production hub so that we can start produce. We need manufacturing and we are ideally located we, at the center of Sadek basically as a town. Mm. Now with the new Transcalari uh, operation at the border, 24 hours and one stop border post that we are looking at, we hope that a lot of manufacturing will take place. We hope that the rail line will be completed so that uh, cargo can be transported by rail and employment can be created. And we are also looking at, for example, revisiting some of the past activities like dairy mm -hmm. so that we, we can start feeding our people, keep the people busy on the, in communal land. And with our innovation and incubation hub that we started in Omaheke, we're going out into the region as well as the, the coming of the VTC to Omaheke. It's a very important development mm -hmm. that is also then now bringing uh, new skills to our people. and, and and soon, I hope we can say that this figure of 39% of unemployment rate is down. But also the issue how we regard employment rate, we regard employment rate as when you work for a salary. But there's a lot of people who work for themselves, who are having their cattle, who left from them, who every auction they come and sell them. But unfortunately, that is not taken as self-employment. Mm -hmm. and, and the narrative in terms of employment uh, statuses is, is also being uh, mistrued. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to. Uh, a colleague of Kavango asked me one day, but why would you say we are poor if we every day have food to eat? Mm -hmm. It can't be poor. Yeah. So how do we judge poverty? It's now again the monetary uh, value that is being attached to it. But if you sustain yourself, according to some people, they are sustained. Mm -hmm. They take care of themselves. Absolutely. They don't need to have a fixed employment that they work for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
We go for a very short break and then I return with uh, Governor Pio Ganate. The conversation continues on uh, the evening review. Now, Governor, I think to be fair to you also, uh, mm. because you said in your opening remarks mm. that um, the issues of malnutrition and hunger were just part of a bigger speech that you gave. Mm. Maybe what are some of the positives? Because mm. this was, of course, a very dark spot, but mm. uh, in terms of uh, the light spots, mm. what can you tell us about yeah. Omaheke? Now, thank you very much, Toivo. The, the, the one beautiful thing is when you know where you are and where you're heading to. And that is what we have done as a region. We know our challenges and we knew what could be the possible solutions to the challenges. So mm. we invested heavily as an office into what we call the innovation space, uh, innovation and incubation. For example, for now, we have seven TVET students that are being incubated because we realize that giving employment to people is not going to be a sustainable uh, solution. But sustainability is to create employers, people who will employ others. Mm -hmm. And we have given ex exceptional uh, emphasis to TVET students uh, that we have uh, now incubating them, seven of them, at the mm -hmm. innovation and incubation hub, they're getting a seed capital of $50,000 and they get space to operate from and within the next 12 months they will have to go back where they're coming from and set up industry and we're not going to let them on their own, we're still going to further mentor them and turn them into real business people and that exercise we hope that every second year we can incubate more people and actually create more employment and we're not going to to compel them to start businesses in Khobabes. In mm. fact, we're encouraging them to go back where they're coming from and go start their businesses there. So once we do that, it's now up to the local authorities, for example, to create operational space for these people. Mm. And that's where we know that this is a multifaceted effort and everybody should come on board. So as an office, we're doing that and uh, we pride ourselves with uh, our uh, innovation and incubation hub, the Innovation Kitchen, that where we produce products. Our women are doing gem, they're doing all types of uh, uh, products and then from the kitchen to the, to the shelves. Mm -hmm. So that is, for example, efforts of creating employment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The... The... Um so you spoke about uh, Khobabes being the only sort of town in, in the region. Um, Red Flay, what can be done there? Mm -hmm. he, um, I mean, we know that uh, that big factory uh, sort of closed down, which must have also affected the region in, some, in, man, in many ways. Mm -hmm. But is there any effort to really create other urban centers within the region to really absorb some of these uh, people? Mm. Yeah, the, the, the other thing, the other upset thing is that uh, there is this type of uh, uh, categories that local government is divided in, that you have village councils, towns, and, and then municipalities. Now, what happened to village councils, no bank want to guarantee property, give loans, and those are the detrimental factors to places like Vetflay, Oshinene, Oshinene a little bit different, and, and of course places like Leonardville. Now with the new law that is coming in, all these places will have to be upgraded to the status of town. So we hope that all our three village councils will be declared towns, as well as Betapos, which mm. is fast growing over the... The last few months, about a hundred houses have been set up in uh, at the border post, and also with the operation of the twenty-four hour, the one-stop border post. This is one growing town, so we hope to have more towns in in place come the elections of twenty twenty-eight, mm. um, twenty twenty-five. Yeah, the November uh, next year that we will be having more towns and more development coming. But as far as Red Flay is concerned, we are also now talking to Akriba and some possible investors, and we hope to see the Red Flay Abattoir up and running again. Mm -hmm. 
which will bring the necessary livelihood. Apart from that, we also have a smelter plant in Betfle, and this smelter plant want to grow much bigger than the current operations that they are in. And there are a lot of deposits of copper and, and so on around Betfle. Mm -hmm. So we, we hope that those towns can also then uh, have a new lease on life. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, on, on the issues of um, of hunger and malnutrition, mat, instead of that I'm taking you back, mm. it's just such a, a, a sad situation. Is it affecting, we know for example that uh, you have the sun community mm. within your, your region, uh, and other ethnic, ethnicities, but um, do, do we have any clarity as to who is most affected by this? Could it be the sun, for example, because of the, the way they live, or is it a general mm. thing across the, the population? Mm. Yeah, the, the one beautiful thing about the sun community is that they are very close-knit. They, they stay together. Mm -hmm. They share whatever they have. And, and unfortunately, this malnutrition is cross-cutting. It's affecting everyone. Uh, I regularly go to hospital and you will see Hereros, you see Oshuambo people, you will see Damara, you will see Sun people also, all of them. It's affecting all of them. It's urban hunger. Mm. Urban hunger is a very serious challenge that we have. And our three hotspots is Oshinene, where we have a lot of refugees coming from Angola into Oshinene, because Oshinene is also very fast growing. And then you have Dreamyopsis, where you have former farm workers who are unemployed there, close to 3,000 of them. And of course, Hobabes with a huge informal settlement that have sprung up overnight. And, and that's where our hotspots are. Mm -hmm. And they are cross-cutting. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's that's very crucial information. The, the issue of land, Governor, mm -hmm. it, it is, I mean, you, you spoke about the multi <laughs> yeah, that word. Well, mm. <laughs> that it's it's a it's a multiple of factors that mm. affect that mm. cause these kind of problems. Mm. Land remains an issue also, of course, across the country. But mm. in Omaheke too, uh, not so long ago, I think earlier this year, we saw some some local uh, livestock owners who drove their animals and dropped their animals into vet sand. Mm -hmm. I think it's a government farm mm -hmm. reserved uh, mostly for people who want to return from, Bots uh, from Botswana. Mm -hmm. How is the land issue affecting all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a again, uh, Trevor, we have uh, places that are highly dense, uh, densely populated. Uh, uh, places like former uh, second tier government farms, uh, like uh, the ones bought by the Damara administration by then. And of course, Aminus itself also, which is a very small reserve. And there are people all over the, the region who are grazing their cattle along corridors and so on. And it's a concern that we are looking at as uh, regional leadership as to how can we address that issue. Mm -hmm. So, but the unfortunate part is that people then took the law in their own hands and moved into vet sand, and which we cannot encourage because that's lawlessness, it's chaos. If every one of us, if I don't have a house and tomorrow I just decide I have to move into Trevor's house because I don't have a house, it doesn't work like that. So what we are saying to the farmers, yes, we know you have needs, we know you need land, but let's do it orderly. Mm -hmm. Let's engage government. Let's get farms to be allocated to, for example, the regional governor so that he can resettle these people who are in need of land. Because the current administration of land allocation is too slow. It will never, at, it will never answer to the land demand. Mm. But if farms can be deliberately bought and be given to that region and say, depopulate all the other places that you have and give land to them, and which the minister have responded very positively during his visit to Omaheke, mm -hmm. that yes, governor, I think that's the way to go. We'll look at it. We're just looking for money. And if we have money, we can give you additional farms and, and you can resettle your people there. So that's, uh, that's the way we should go about it. But unfortunately also, is we sometimes politicize the things. Yeah, yeah uh, that's unfortunate. And through politicizing it, you deny so many people the opportunity to be attended to. 
and especially if I, for example, come out of a, a reserve like uh, Bukiro and just because Tuiwo have moved into the land I join, then we're not, real, we're not addressing the real issue. Mm. Yeah, we must learn also how, when to stand back for someone else to be assisted. Absolutely, mm. and, and which leads me to my next, next question because um, the, oh, the 2019 election uh, 2020, 2020, 2020 mm. election brought about some uh, political changes in Omaheke mm. where the opposition uh, made some inroads and I wonder if uh, that has also created a bit of uh, hot temperature within the region or, or you are at a space where you say look Yes, we come from different d political denominations, but mm. but we have a crisis at hand. Mm. Let's all work together. How, how is how is it how has it been working with mm. the opposition people is, is in yeah. particular? No, I, I think in terms of uh, overall governance of the region, uh, uh, the ruling party is in the driving seat with five seats compared to the two that belongs to the neutral party. Mm. But at local government level, for example, Hobabes, we have a coalition. And in Leonardville, the ruling party is ruling Vetfle coalition in Oshinene, the Nuto party is in charge there. But overall, overall, we do not really have problems that we see in other regions happening where, for example, a regional governor cannot be allowed to deliver a state of the region address or people are having uh, that hostile um, in you know, attitude towards, for example, the ruling party or the governor in place or a, a particular councillor. Mm. Overall, in Omaheke, we're working very well together. Uh, of course, within themselves, there could be in fights, but when it comes to authority, when it comes to moving the region forward, many a times we do not really realize that we are belonging from different parties but we, we concentrate on the ball yeah. and that the region should be developed i would say that we really have good cooperation amongst ourselves absolutely mm. final question to governor briefly mm. the um the amid all these challenges and i know that you're steering mm. a, a ship there uh, perhaps steady, steadily mm. But uh, it's politics again. Mm. Uh, are we going to see Governor uh, Ganate returning uh, after his term has ended? Are you confident of being retained? Do you think you have sold yourself properly as a man <laughs> that can lead the region? No, I, I don't know. I, I think the appointment of governors is at the behest of the president, the appointing authority. And of course, we have a population of 102,000 in the region. And being picked to serve the region is absolutely a privilege and an honor. And I believe there are many other people who can do a much better job than me. And I had my chance to serve the region. If reappointed, by all means, I will have to execute that uh, task with the same enthusiasm, if not more, since I would have learned from all the shortfalls and mistakes that I could have made. And I have a wonderful team around myself, my PA, my secretary, the community, they there, and we know where we're heading to. Mm -hmm. And we are actually at the peak where we say we are now at the point of really delivering uh, uh, services to our people. We introduce beautiful days like the service delivery day of the governor, where we go from constituency to constituency, bringing government services closer. We are also at realizing our food systems at Farm Nivehoop, and we are also at the point of realizing our dream of a glass of milk per child in Omaheke. So definitely, there is so much that we can still offer Absolutely. if given the opportunity. But if not given the opportunity, I believe then we can proudly also say we have done our part and, oh. and somebody else can, can build on. And we believe in the saying that says the one plant, the other one waters and God makes it grow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we won't have regrets at all. Absolutely. Mm. Governor, thank you for coming Thank you on. very much. Yes. Thank you. That much. is uh, tonight's uh, evening review with uh, Governor Pio Nganate from Omaheke region, telling us about uh, the challenges and opportunities in that region. Thank you for watching. Thank you.